There's no better way to learn organic chemistry than practicing problems. So in this lesson, we're going to do some nomenclature problems involving alkanes and cycloalkanes. I put a link in the video description to a PDF file of the problems that will work in this lesson. So if you'd like to go ahead and practice first and then follow along with me, you can do so. Alright, let's get started. Okay, here's our first problem. First of all, we need to identify our longest carbon chain. Let's just start by counting across this linear piece right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's 7 carbon atoms in that chain. It might look like we have a heptane with an isopropyl group coming off, but we can't be deceived by the way these things are drawn. We need to count in all directions, so let's try also counting up this chain to make sure we didn't miss anything. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, well actually, if we go in this nonlinear fashion, we have one extra carbon. We can also count like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's going to give us the same result. So this is actually an octane. Let's go ahead and circle our longest carbon chain. So now if we look at our circle, we notice that these groups are left out. We want to number our chain in such a way that these groups, the methyl groups that are sticking off of our longest carbon chain, have the lowest number possible. So we're going to start numbering from this end. So now we can see we have a methyl group on carbon 2 and carbon 3. So we'll have to name this with a dimethyl prefix. And we'll need to show the numbers that we used. So we're going to write 2 comma 3 dimethyl and then use our parent chain name which is 8 carbon so it is octane. For our next example, let's try a haloalkane. Okay, first things first, let's look for our longest carbon chain. And don't ignore any substituents that are sticking off. Try to count up those chains as well to make sure you don't miss it. So here we go, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then if we count across, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So indeed, our longest carbon chain is this one going linearly this time. And now we have a halogen on here and some methyl groups. So we need to think about what has priority. Now halogens and methyls don't have any priority over each other when you're numbering them in the chain. You just want to number the chain in the direction that hits the alkyl group or the halide first. So we're going to need to start numbering from the left in this case. So we have hexane for our suffix, and we need to figure out how to lay out our prefix. We have a bromine and methyls, and so we want to put these in alphabetical order. And we have a dimethyl, but we're of course going to ignore di and tri in our alphabetization of this. So this compound is going to be 2-bromo for 4-dimethylhexane. Now let's do a cyclic example. Okay, here we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 membered ring. So this is going to be a cyclopentane. Now, how should we number our substituents? Well, we have two alkyl groups coming off. So let's number. We're going to number in a way that puts the lowest number on the substituent that comes first in the alphabet. Here it's easy. It just goes in alphabetical order. So isopropyl having the I is going to be number 1. And then we want to number in a way that we hit our next substituent with a low number. So we're going to number counterclockwise in this case. So this compound here is 1-isopropyl, 2-methylcyclopentane. Now the methylcyclopentane is going to be all one word. I ran out of room here and I didn't want to add a misleading dash in, so just methylcyclopentane. Let's do a couple more cyclic examples. Okay, this is kind of a funny example. We have a cyclopropane. And we have a butyl chain. So do we name this as a butane or as a cyclopropane? Well, the rule is whichever one is longer will take priority here. So butane is 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons and cyclopropane is just 3. And so it's our butane chain that we're going to name this after. We want to number in such a way that the substituent is at the lowest position. So here we have one cyclopropyl butane, or since it's one, we can just assume that's implied and call this cyclopropyl butane. 
Next, let's look at a ring with more than two substituents. I'm going to start counting at the ethyl group because that'll give me a good starting point. It's different from these, so I won't lose track. So I'll just call this one for now to figure out how many carbon atoms are in my ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I have a cycloheptane. Now we need to figure out how to number this. We want as many substituents as possible, as many of our alkyl groups as possible to get low numbers. If I number this one, I skip a carbon before I can get to this one, so this would be three. However, if I start numbering at this methyl here, one, two, three, four, my substituents will have the lowest numbers possible. If I went in this direction, one, two, three, four, five, six, I wouldn't get into this one until it was number six. So the way to do it is in this direction. So in my prefix, I'll have a one, two dimethyl and I'll have a four ethyl. But we need to think about what order these are put in. It might be tempting to put the dimethyl first because D is before E, but remember that's not how it's done. We actually need to think about the main part of the prefix, which is methyl and begins with an M. So actually, 4-ethyl is going to lead our prefix. The name of this compound will be 4-ethyl-1,2-dimethylcycloheptane. Let's change it up and do a couple problems in which we're given the name and have to draw the structure from it. Okay, here we're given trans-1-bromo-3-methylcyclohexane. It's most straightforward to just start with our suffix, our cyclohexane ring. Let's arbitrarily put some numbers on this unsubstituted cyclohexane. We need to add a bromine here at the one position and a methyl over here at the three position. But these are trans. What that means is they are on opposite sides of the ring. And so we need to draw one coming up and one going back. So I've added on my substituents with a solid wedge coming up to the bromine and a dash going back to the methyl group to show that they're on opposite sides of the ring. There's actually one more possibility for this compound. I don't want to get into stereochemistry too much in this lesson because that's not the goal here. The goal is just naming. But if we put bromine down and the methyl coming up, we actually get a different compound. These two compounds are not the same. We can't put this on top of it and have everything line up because the bromine is going back in one and coming out of the page at you in the other. These are actually mirror images of each other. And so enantiomers are possible for this given name. Let's try one more problem where we generate the structure given the name. We have 3-chloro-5-ethylheptane. Let's begin by drawing out our seven-membered chain given the prefix heptane. Here is our seven carbon chain. Let's add in our numbers. We can start at either end. Okay, now we need to add the chlorine to our three position and our ethyl group to the five position. Now, notice these chains were each equidistant from each end. So we had a choice if we were naming this. Um, we'd have to figure out if we were going in this direction or this direction. Of course, C for chloro comes in the alphabet before E for ethyl, and so we chose this direction. KP here. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up on the way out, and for more chemistry, subscribe to my channel.